Hello traders and welcome to part two in my Wake Off trading series. Uh, so yeah, I did pronounce it differently this time. Uh, it is actually properly pronounced Richard D. Wyckoff, not Wickoff. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I was pronouncing it wrong in part one. But yeah, so let's do part two Wyckoff theory. And in today's video, we're going to be going over five examples of consolidation and labeling them either accumulation or distribution. We're going to be looking at the five different kinds of phases, uh, A through E. Uh, within consolidation that you're likely to see. And we're also going to go into a bit of the individual details of, uh, of consolidation moves before they turn into trends. So to begin, we are doing the, uh, part two for the price prediction challenge. And the question for this week is, what is the highest price that Omai's Go will go on Bitfinex before this Friday? So as usual, all you have to do is just join the Discord if you have not already. Uh, select a price that you think is going to be the highest price for OMG USD by Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, mark up your chart to how you got that prediction, so volume, profile, fibs, or, or whatever you want to use. And then just private message at CHOP, your prediction, and uh, win the challenge, hopefully, uh, but there can only be one winner, of course, and reap the rewards. Rewards being uh, a token, multiple tokens, and uh, a, a custom shout out from me in my next video, if you attach a custom message. All right, so let's do a quick recap on what we went over for part one of Wyckoff trading theory. I, I, like, I like saying it Wyckoff so much better, but I, I know that I have to say Wyckoff because that's the, Wyckoff is the correct way to say it. So don't, don't listen to me in part one with the way I was pronouncing that. It's Wyckoff. So we went over the law of supply and demand, which is pretty intuitive. And then after that, we went into two laws that are a little bit less intuitive with, with Wyckoff theory, the law of cause and effect, Basically, cause refers to the consolidation phase and how that turns into uh, a trend. So that's where you're going to see either distribution or accumulation of the big market players like the market makers, the institutions, the HFTs. These kinds of traders are going to be accumulating or distributing positions with limit orders, while retail takes the opposite side of the trade. And finally, the law of effort. So this is just looking at candlestick momentum and also candlestick volume and comparing those two. We also talked about the four types of consolidation as well, and if you want to pause the video and just read these over, you can. So new material here, let's talk about the five phases before we go into um, Wyckoff theory and the five examples. So if we just look at the schematics here, uh, the accumulation uh, schematic one for the first Wyckoff event, phase A, if we're just talking about a downtrend turning into consolidation, then turning into an uptrend. Phase A is going to have is going to be the selling climax. So this is this is where going to be a lot of retail traders are market selling and just giving up on the asset. Phase B is going to be known as building the cause for the emerging trend. So this is where institutional and market makers are going to begin to note to see a uh, to find an opportunity to accumulate long positions as retail stop losses begin to get be hit. Remember those retail stop losses if they go long are going to be triggered as sell market orders that are going to sell right to the institution's limit. Exactly what they want to see. Oh, a little, little sneak peek there. Um, yeah, so that's what, that's what phase B is going to be. After that, we're going to get phase C. Uh, phase C is going to be the most violent phase, typically, besides phase A, the stopping. Phase C is going to be a fake move below support. So this is typically what you're going to see, and it's called a spring. You're going to see price do this once, typically, but it can just do this sometimes. Typically, you're going to see price do this once, known as the secondary test. It's testing this level of supply and demand. After that, price is going to go up. However, there might be retail long positions who are beginning to accumulate here. This represents an opportunity for large institutions to actually take these, these traders' uh, long positions. How do they do that? Well, if they manipulate price to go lower, uh, known as spring, then it, when these retail traders put their stop loss here, the stop losses get hit, and then those retail traders are market selling to the institutions. Institutions are happy. Retail is not. So that's going to be your phase B to phase C, where phase C, we're going to get the mass accumulation. Phase D it occurs after the shakeout. We're, we're be, beginning to see some signs of strength, the SOS, where price is beginning to ramp up on demand. However, and this is important to say, Retail is still going to be convinced that price is not going higher. So if you read this on StockTwits, Twitter, uh, looking at sentiment, order flow, all of these things, 
you're basically going to see retail traders convinced that price is just going to continue going lower, when in reality, this is where price actually just goes higher. After phase D, we get phase E. Phase E is where price leaves the trading range and begins a new uptrend. So I do want to say that this can be completely reversed when we look at distribution schematics. So it's just the opposite. So phase A is just going to be uh, mass market buying where many uh, traders are entering retail longs at bad prices and becoming trapped uh, up here at these higher. And then it's just going to continue to be the same thing, but, but the opposite where, you know, the upthrust, the UT and the upthrust above distribution, these are just going to be stopping up shorts who may have shorted the market around here. Uh, taking the shorts positions and then also trapping any longs who see price go above consolidation and get excited and then they re they retail market buy uh, and then they're just going to be really market buying to the limit sell orders that institutions are happily putting putting out there so yeah that's going to be it uh, one thing I will say uh, before we move into the five examples how can you tell when price moves beyond support or resistance that let me show it here. How can you tell when price moves above uh, support and resistance that price won't just continue moving in that direction? Well, there are two ways. You can look at the order book and you can look at uh, volume and price. In the order book, if you see price actually move below support and then price continues to move below support as you know stop losses get hit for longs, but then you see a massive bid wall forming, this could be exactly what's occurring with phase C, where Price is selling down, and everyone believes that it's just going to continue to go lower. And then out of nowhere, a gigantic bid wall just pushes price back up very, very quickly. This is the kind of formation that you're going to be seeing in the order book. Uh, if you're not really much of an order book trader and more of a price action volume trader, what you're probably going to see is when we see the market move above resistance, typically we'd expect that there should be a lot of volume, right, to climb above uh, resistance. When there's not a lot of volume and price moves a little bit beyond resistance, that is a really good spot to sell. Same with this as well. So price moves above resistance is a, and this is why, price moving above resistance is a large effort move. So with a large amount of effort, we need a large amount of volume. And if we don't see a lot, large amount of volume, then that price move will likely fail. As you can see, I mean, might, might occur here. We'll, we'll get into this example. One last thing I do want to say, and I know I keep saying these one last things. The only time where you would want to see high volume with a market fake out, also known as a market shakeout, where the market moves like above uh, consolidation and then you're expecting it to move back down, if you see a very, very long price tail, so a very high price tail that just cuts above consolidation, it will very likely be just high volume because it's, it's triggering many orders, which would mean many transactions, which would mean high volume, or just a price tail that goes very quickly below support on high volume. That does not mean that price is just going to continue moving in that direction. Um, that more often than not means it's just a stop loss on, on high volume. So if you see a large price tail, expect large volume. Uh, if you expect price to go in the other direction, of course. If you see a price move above resistance or below support, you want to see very, very low volume as there's not a lot of conviction for that move to continue. All right, let's get into it. So to start off with, is this accumulation or is this distribution? That's the first question that we probably want to be asking ourselves. And to answer that question, we want to look at the schematics here and see which one fits better. Look at the distribution one. This looks like it really fits price quite well. Preliminary supply to the buying climax. Yeah, I see... I think I see that there. So I see preliminary uh, supply here. And then I see the buying climax. So this is where the majority of the buying is occurring, right? Not a lot of volume, but a lot of volume here. A lot of retail buying in. After I see that, I see the upthrust, the UT, and that's right there. So we get an upthrust a little bit above consolidation and an upthrust here as well. So this will be a, 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 a minier upthrust and this will be the major. And then after that, we see a price move back down. So this is going to stop out some shorts. And then we see this price move back down. And then we see a price move above that level there. This is probably the upthrust above distribution, which is stopping out any retail shorts that might still be in the market who are scalping. And what it's also doing is trapping longs at bad positions at the top, which is exactly what institutions want. So after we see that, we see a price move that's quite confident moving lower. So this could be our phase D. Um, this looks pretty perfect to be a phase D. And remember that phase D 
is going to occur after the shakeout, and it's probably going to occur in high momentum and high volume. And yeah, I think we see I think we see definitely high momentum and average volume, average to high volume here. Finally, we see this. This looks like it's exactly this, the SOW, the sign of weakness. Consolidation a little bit below support. If you make the case that this could be accumulation, and we actually want to look at the other way and completely relook at this market, I don't really see how this could be market accumulation of the institutions. Let's look here. Does this fit the schematic for, yeah, does this fit the schematic for this consolidation? I don't really think it does. And then just going off price action and price volume, I see price closing below support. Whenever there's a market shakeout or a market spring, typically what you're going to see is a V type of formation, a V here, a V here. You're going to see the price move immediately below and then go right back into the trading range here. This is not occurring. What I see is price goes down, goes a little bit up with a rally, up to previous support here that could become future resistance. So this looks quite bearish to me. Not surprisingly, uh, it goes down. It consolidates for a little bit more, as you can see here, and then just uh, just uh, goes down right there, as you can see. Yeah, so this was distribution, and this is really what you should be looking out for. All right, example number two. So this one I'm not going to talk about as much before, but let me just say, uh, pause the video here and look at this example and compare it back to these schematics here. And uh, do you think this is distribution or do you think this is consolidation? So let's see if uh, any traders here can get four for four on the next examples. You have a 50-50 shot, really, of <laughs> accumulation or distribution. So, yeah. All right, so let me now input my theory on what I think I see here. So this, to me, looks like distribution. This is a tough one, though, and, and I, I do have to say, uh, but and, and also I am the one who prepared these examples, so I, you know, I already, I already do know the answer. Uh, unfortunately, this is, you know, I can't make this new, but this looks like distribution schematic number two, where we have a buying climax, and then we have the up thrust, and then we have the last uh, preliminary supply occurring here, right? LPSY, boom. UT, boom. Buying climax, boom. The majority of the volume occurs here. And this would make a lot more sense for the buying climax there. So this is really just looking like distribution to me. Uh, yeah. And also, finally, when price moved beyond resistance here, we saw no volume, really, just nothing special. Uh, so, yeah. And also, we see stronger candlestick uh, volume and candlestick momentum on, looks like the downward moves are a bit stronger. So this looks a lot like distribution to me. You could argue a case for accumulation, but I don't really see how that would fit this. But yeah, this was distribution. Price went lower. All right, now let's look at this example here. So this is going to be a little bit more of a zoomed out example, as you can see. So does this look like accumulation or distribution? Again, I'm going to give you guys five seconds to just uh, gut reaction what you think to see if you can get, you know, Two for four here, if you got the first one right. Yeah, so I think this looks like accumulation. And for anyone wondering who this might, that this might be phase C, because that, I mean, that's completely uh, normal. You might be wondering, hey, is this phase C with the up thrust above distribution? Well, if it was phase C, I think we would probably see a quick price move up and then just a price move beginning to move down, as you can see here. Uh, when the UTAD occurs, what you're going to see is a lower low, a lower low, a lower low, a lower high, a lower high, a lower high. Do we see that here? Not really. I, I see a higher high made here, I see a higher low here, and then I see, I see price move back down here, and then I see price move back up down to here. This looks, and also we see very high candlestick momentum. We also see very, very high candlestick volume as well on this up move. It looks like institutions likely accumulated positions here. I also see a spring here and an ST here. Let me show you guys what I mean by that. So I think that this is accumulation. We see the selling climax, the ST, and the spring. Let's take a look for all three of those. Uh, this was a previous uptrend, so actually we would get a buying climax here, an ST here, which should have high volume, 
then after that we see a spring that should have low volume, and it does, it has very low volume, and then price immediately makes that V type of formation, V formation. Price is not making a V formation here, meaning that price will likely just continue moving upward. Yes, this was accumulation. Price went higher, as you can see here, and continued to go higher than that. All right, so we have another example here with uh, Bitcoin Bitfinex 5 minute. So we see a previous uh, demand run here, and we see high volume and um, good candlestick price action. So what does this look like? Does this look like distribution, or does this look look like look like accumulation? Do you believe that institutions are accumulating positions, or do you think institutions are distributing their positions or entering short? Well, let's look at a few of the facts here. I do see a buying climax here. Uh, and then we see really not a lot of volume until we go up to here, as you can see. We have a large amount of, of uh, volume here. So this could be a spring, and this could be our UT. I mean, pardon me, not our UT. Uh, yeah, this looks like distribution to me if I haven't said that. Yep, this looks like our UT, and, and this doesn't look like our spring. I meant to say U UTAD, the up thrust above distribution. UTAD, UT, buying climax, and then price should go lower. Yep, awesome. Because uh, I, I didn't remember this example, uh, actually, if, if price went lower or higher. So this one was actually a genuine, I didn't know, um, but I, I did guess distribution. So yeah, so if you got this one right as well for distribution, then you would be a three for four. One quick note on just why this went, um, went, uh, went down. Do you see many instances of longs being stopped out? I really don't. Uh, I don't. It doesn't really look like the market really wants to stop out the longs, right? Price actually respects support and just confidently looks like it's doing quite well. High volume, high momentum. So this, I think, looks like an example of where retail just wants to buy in and uh, you know make money, but then the institutions are happy that that happens because they can just sell and you know dump on the retail, and that's what we see here. So I think this is the final example here, and probably one of the hardest. So is this accumulation or is this distribution? Uh, and for this last example here, also try to label it as well. I mean, in your mind, or you can just uh, draw on the on your screen if you want. But just look at distribution schematic one and accumulation schematic one, and wonder which one do you think that this one really looks like? Because it's, it's going to be one of those. I'll give you that hint. So I'm going to give you guys five seconds for that. Okay, so what I see here is a buying climax with preliminary supply here. Um, yeah, 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 uh, exactly. I see a buying climax with preliminary supply. A preliminary supply, buying climax. And then after that, I see the uh, up thrust here. And then after that, I see the ST, the secondary test, and the spring. And this one's really clear. Uh, yeah, ST, spring. The ST has very, very low volume, and the spring has much higher volume. Typically, we, we want to see the spring having really not a lot of volume. However, in this example, I actually do notice here that we have a lot of low price tails. And if price begins to climb back up in that type of V formation, then this will probably just continue to go higher as institutions have accumulated demand at this uh, opportunity here. However, if price just continues to consolidate here, or if price actually begins to make another low or, or begin to close near lows, then yes, this would probably just be distribution and price goes lower. However, this doesn't really look like an SOW to me. Remember, SOW, sign of worry. This looks a lot more like a spring. So, yep, this was the perfect spot to buy. As strange as that looked, that was the beginning of the uptrend. If you had bought at 14.1, and then, I mean, th th this, is, this is the best spot to buy. And it's weird because most retail would probably agree that this looks like the worst spot to buy. Price just closed below support. I mean, what are you talking about buying here, dude? You're insane. But yeah, price, price went higher and did not make any more lows. It, cause Price didn't need to make any more lows because institutions already shook out the longs who uh, wanted to buy into this consolidation accumulation here. So this was a really aggressive kind of scummy move by the, <laughs> I don't want to say scummy, but beneficial move by the institutions to really convince retail that price is just going to dump. 
and then uh, and then they just pump the, the asset as you can see here. High momentum, high volume, price continues to go higher. So this ended up being the phase C, just for those who are interested in the phase theory. Yeah, so phase B we had here, phase C we had here, right? Let me go back to accumulation. Phase C we had here, and then phase D is pretty apparent here. We see price begin to move up, and then we see the SOS, the sign of strength, right here. We begin to see some consolidation, a little bit below resistance, and then after that we get a, a confident move above resistance that begins the phase E. So phase E began right there. All right, so this is going to be a long video, I think like 22 minutes. Yeah. All right, so that is the five examples that I have here, as you can see, with accumulation and distribution. If you got all four right, uh, which, I mean, there is a chance that you got all four right, and kudos to you if you did. I think the odds would be uh, 1 in 16 that you would get all four right by my math. Uh, someone can correct correct that math if, if you think that's wrong, but I think it's 1 in 16. Um, yeah. If you have any questions or comments on uh, Wyckoff uh, events or also how to pronounce it, because that is probably <laughs> a good question, uh, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, then uh, feel free to check that out. And uh, yeah, have a great day.